Greetings from the blizzard here in Michigan. I'm actually snowed in this morning waiting for things to clear before I go into work. So I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys a needed safety update for the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. Here we go. So here's the safety concern that I'd like to share with you about the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. I'm sure this issue probably exists with other transmitters but for this video, we're going to concentrate on this model only. So back in the day, these old transmitters used the old two-prong power cords. This is actually an original that's still installed on the Viking 2. Later on, Johnson used some of these type plugs that actually have two fuse holders installed kind of a unique plug. You see these mostly on the Rangers. So the Viking 2 on the left I recently repaired but one thing that I thought was interesting is when it came into the shop the plate switch and the filament switch the bat handle toggle was wrapped with black electrical tape. I thought well maybe somebody did that because it was a little rough on their fingers and need a little cushion but now I think I know what the real reason was. Let me show you. So what we're going to do initially is simply plug in the transmitters. All right. The transmitters will not be powered up. They're just plugged in. So if you envision this is sitting on your table at home, you don't have the thing on, right? But take a look at my AC voltmeter. When I simply measure, we'll start with this one, from the ground to the switch. See 83 volts of AC with the transmitter off. Okay. Now I'm going to flip my power and we'll measure it again. 38 volts. Let's do the same test on this transmitter over here. All right, same deal. Transmit over here, I'll go to the chassis. See 76 volts. That's the same if I were to contact the bat handle of the toggle switch. Oops, there we go. See the same voltage. Now I'm gonna do the same deal, flip the power cord. Same situation as the transmitter on the left. So you initially think, well maybe there's some leakage from the power transformer to the chassis causing that, right? So let's go to ohms. I'll go to 2K. Go to the chassis. In this case, I'm going to turn on the filament so now the AC is actually connected to the primary of the power transformer. You can see there's nothing there. Go up 2 meg. Same deal. So it is not leakage through the power transformer causing the situation. If you take a look at the schematic though, the uh, reason for this is quite obvious. Let me show you. Here's the schematic of the Johnson Viking 2. This is our power transformers. So you got your plate transformer up here and then you got a low voltage as they call it transformer here which supplies 300 volts and filaments and so on and so forth to so the transmitter. Right there is the AC plug. You see it's a two prong plug. Goes up through these two RFC coils and then goes to the primaries of the transformers. But if you look right here you see C41 and C42. Those are little disc caps that are actually tied to chassis. So if you imagine you have a floating chassis, right, because it's not grounded, your AC cord is actually coupling that AC to the chassis. And that's why you see the differences in AC when you flip the power cord. So you know what this thing needs, just like an old guitar amp that bites you when you play it, this thing needs a grounded power cord. All right, here is the AC input circuitry that I showed you on the schematic. You can see the power cord coming in from behind. Those are the RFC AC input coils. Here's the green caps. So the 
plan of action is we install a three-prong grounded type cord, remove the green disc caps because they are kind of like the death cap on an old Fender amplifier. When you change out to the grounded cord, these serve no purpose because now your ground is going to chassis. So I'm sure most of you that have used these old Viking 2s in the past, at one time or another, you've seen some slight arky sparkies when you hook up your coax to the SO239 output jack. That is due to a poor ground and now the transmitter is actually grounding through your coax to your antenna system, right? So the manual is very clear about hooking up a good ground to the stud. But now we'll have another level of protection by putting on the three prong grounded AC cord. Here's the original two conductor power cord going through this grommet into the back of the transmitter. You can see it's a pretty tight fit here. Okay, you got the two pin crystal socket right there. Now there is some space on this side, but unfortunately you may damage this little sticker here, the EF Johnson sticker in this process. I have seen people in the past that pop these grommets out. They'll just shove in the three conductor cord, use like a zip tie <clears throat> inside to restrain it. I don't recommend that because the aluminum over time will cut through the insulation of that cord. So the best thing to do is open this up. And I'm going to use a standard guitar amp type restraint device. Okay, So you put your cord in here, you crimp it, and you push it into the chassis. So to start the process, you need to take out, there's some screws down here and nuts, and you need to pull this RFC assembly up out of the way. That'll expose the AC cord coming in from behind. We can get the hole drilled, get her wired up, and put this back in. Right, I've got the little coil assembly loose. You can see right back there was the grommet that the old cord came in through. So I'm gonna remove that open this hole up a little bit for the new restraint device and we'll get the power cord in. So to open this hole up to the right dimension I'm going to use a stepper bit okay and when I put it in here I'm actually going to apply force to try to move the hole away from the crystal socket so that I'm not constraining myself. All right I got the new hole for the restraint device so that'll pop right in there you want to make sure that that hole is pretty tight on the restraint otherwise it's just going to fall out and then you got a real problem right so take your time when you drill this and yes guys unfortunately i hurt the little viking head there and i do not believe in modifying equipment but in this case it's a safety issue so i'm good with this type of mod so here we go pop in that restraint do that nice click, that jobber is nice and secure. This is the same type setup that they use on classic guitar amps that have been around for 50 years, so it will do this Viking justice. So your hot and neutral are going to solder back on these RFC chokes where they were to begin with. You can tell which one was the hot lead because if you look at your schematic, the hot goes to the fuse holder and then to the switch, okay? So you can just follow that back. Now the ground is a different matter because there was not a ground lug in here, but there are plenty of locations where you can find easy ground or you can set a ground lug. I've got everything wired up. still need to screw in this assembly. I elected to grab my ground on this lug that's right next to the fuse holder. Here's the fallen soldiers. Those are those little green 005 caps that will not be used anymore. Get this thing hooked up, clean her out, we'll fire it up. Mission complete. Got the new three prong cord installed. Plugged it in. Once again, the transmitter is off. So now if I measure from ground to the chassis, obviously there's no voltage there, right? Here's my, so there's the final product. You can see it's a nice, secure, and safe installation. So keep in mind this transmitter has been around since 1957 and it's always worked great. 
as long as you properly ground these old ham transmitters, you probably won't have this issue. So this is just an option in case you want to upgrade the safety of your Johnson Viking 2. Hope you enjoy the video.